Welcome, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to this moment of reflection and inspiration. Today, we embark on a journey into the depths of God's love and His divine purpose for each one of us. Whether you're just beginning your Christian walk or you've been walking with Christ for many years, know this. God has a divine purpose for your life and He is calling you into something far greater than you could ever imagine. The Bible, God's holy word, tells us that we are not here by accident. From the very beginning, God has had a purpose for His creation. In Jeremiah 1 verse 5, the Lord says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born I set you apart. These words are a powerful reminder that our lives are not random. We are not simply the result of chance or circumstance. Instead, we are the result of God's intentional design, created with a unique purpose to fulfill in His kingdom. As we explore this idea of divine purpose, let us first consider what it means to have a calling. In the Christian faith, a calling is not simply about finding a career or deciding what you will do with your time. It is about understanding that God has placed you here for a reason. You have been called by God to live a life that reflects His glory, His love, and His grace. Every step you take, every decision you make, should be rooted in the knowledge that you are part of a divine plan. This purpose is not something that is distant or unreachable. It is something that can be discovered by seeking God's will through prayer, meditation, and, most importantly, reading and reflecting on His Word. The Bible is filled with examples of men and women who found their divine purpose through their relationship with God. Take Moses, for instance. He was hesitant and unsure of his calling, but God called him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt reminding him that his strength would guide him. Likewise, we can look to the life of the Apostle Paul, who, after his dramatic conversion, dedicated his life to spreading the gospel. Even when he faced persecution, Paul stayed true to his purpose because he knew it was rooted in God's will. What does this mean for us today? It means that no matter where you are in life, no matter what challenges or obstacles you face, God has a plan for you. You may feel lost, you may feel uncertain about your future, or you may wonder whether you are on the right path. But rest assured, God sees you. He knows your heart, and He is working in ways that you may not yet understand to bring you closer to the purpose He has for your life. This brings us to the teachings of Jesus Christ, who perfectly embodied the will of God. Jesus came to earth with a divine purpose to save humanity from sin and to restore us to right relationship with God. His life was the ultimate example of living out God's plan with love, humility, and obedience. Jesus consistently showed us that our purpose is to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. He lived this out by healing the sick, comforting the weary, and extending grace to the broken. He even prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, saying, Not my will, but yours be done. This is the ultimate act of surrender to God's divine purpose. As Christians, we are called to model our lives after Jesus. We are called to live out His teachings in our daily lives, not only through our words, but through our actions. This means loving others even when it is difficult, forgiving when we have been wronged, and showing kindness and compassion to those in need. Jesus' life teaches us that living out our divine purpose is not always easy, but it is always worth it. In the end, our purpose is not about gaining earthly success or recognition. It is about glorifying God and expanding His kingdom. So how can we discover and live out our divine purpose today? It starts with spending time with God. Just as Jesus withdrew to pray and seek His Father's guidance, we too must make time to seek God's will in our lives. Through prayer, we open our hearts to God's direction. Through Bible study, 
we deepen our understanding of His ways and His desires for us. The Bible serves as a roadmap for our lives, providing wisdom, encouragement, and instruction. We also discover our purpose by being attentive to the needs around us. God often reveals our calling through the opportunities He places in front of us. Perhaps He is calling you to serve in your community, to share the gospel with a co-worker, or to provide encouragement to someone who is struggling. Remember that God does not always call us to grand, visible roles. Sometimes, our divine purpose is fulfilled in the quiet, unnoticed acts of service and love that reflect the heart of Christ. Another important aspect of living out our divine purpose is trusting in God's timing. We may not always understand why things happen the way they do. Sometimes, the path to fulfilling our purpose may be filled with trials and uncertainties. But just as gold is refined in the fire, our faith is strengthened through adversity. Romans 8 verse 28 reminds us, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Even in difficult times, God is working for our good and for His glory. Let us also not forget that we are not alone in this journey. God has given us the Holy Spirit to guide, empower, and comfort us. The Holy Spirit is our helper, leading us into all truth and equipping us with the gifts we need to fulfill our purpose. We are also part of a larger community of believers, the body of Christ. In fellowship with other Christians, we can encourage one another, build each other up, and help each other stay focused on our divine calling. In living out our purpose, we are called to live lives of faith, hope, and love. Faith reminds us that God is in control, even when we cannot see the full picture. Hope assures us that our future is secure in Christ, no matter what challenges we face. And love, the greatest of these, compels us to live for others, just as Christ lived for us. As we go forth, let us commit to being vessels of God's love and instruments of His peace. My precious child, as we continue to reflect on God's divine purpose for each of us, let us remember that our journey with Christ is one of constant growth and transformation. The path of faith is not static. It is dynamic, requiring us to remain open to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Just as a seed must be nurtured to grow into a strong tree, so too must we nurture our faith and continually seek to align our hearts with God's will. One of the profound truths of the Christian life is that God's purpose for us often unfolds gradually. We may not always see the full picture immediately, but God reveals His plan to us step by step as we are ready to receive it. This requires us to practice patience and trust in the process. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 urges us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. It is a call to surrender our limited human perspective and trust that God's wisdom far surpasses our own. In doing so, we acknowledge that His timing is perfect, even when it differs from our own expectations. Living out God's purpose also requires a posture of humility. In the Beatitudes, Jesus taught, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 5 verse 3. To be poor in spirit means to recognize our need for God, to understand that without Him, we can do nothing of eternal value. This humility invites us to lay down our pride and submit our lives fully to God's guidance. It is only when we empty ourselves of selfish ambition that we can be filled with the fullness of His divine purpose. At the core of this purpose is the call to love and serve others. Jesus modeled servant leadership throughout His ministry, reminding us that the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, Matthew 20 verse 28. In our daily lives, we are called to imitate this example, whether in big or small ways. The essence of Christian service is not in the grandeur of our actions, but in the sincerity of our heart to reflect Christ's love. When we serve others with humility and compassion, we become vessels of God's grace, shining his light into the world. Furthermore, as we seek to fulfill God's purpose, 
We must embrace the power of forgiveness. Forgiveness is central to the teachings of Jesus and is a reflection of God's own nature. In Matthew 6 verses 14 to 15, Jesus reminds us that if we forgive others their trespasses, our Heavenly Father will also forgive us. Yet, if we withhold forgiveness, we hinder our relationship with God. Living out our divine purpose means letting go of bitterness, resentment, and anger. It means choosing grace, just as we have been recipients of God's abundant grace. In doing so, we are freed from the weight of unforgiveness, and our hearts become open to the love and peace of Christ. Forgiveness, however, is not merely an inward act. It has profound effects on our relationships with others. As we seek reconciliation and restoration in our relationships, we become agents of peace in a world often marked by division and conflict. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, calls us to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Ephesians 4 verse 3. As Christians, we are ambassadors of Christ's peace, called to be peacemakers in our homes, workplaces, churches, and communities. This is a crucial aspect of fulfilling God's purpose as we work to build up the body of Christ in unity and love. Another key aspect of living out our purpose is cultivating a life of gratitude. The Apostle Paul encourages us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Gratitude shifts our focus from what we lack to the many blessings God has already bestowed upon us. When we cultivate a heart of thanksgiving, we are reminded of God's faithfulness and provision, even in the midst of trials. Gratitude transforms our perspective, allowing us to see God's hand at work in every situation and to trust that He is using all things for our good and His glory. In addition to gratitude, we must also cultivate perseverance. The Christian life is not without challenges, but it is in these challenges that our faith is refined and strengthened. James 1 verses 2 to 4 encourages us to consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Through perseverance, we are shaped into the image of Christ, equipped to carry out the purpose God has for our lives. We learn to rely not on our own strength, but on the strength that comes from God alone. Moreover, as we persevere, we are called to be witnesses of the gospel. Jesus' final command to his disciples was the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20. This command is not limited to pastors or missionaries. It is a call for all believers to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Each of us has a sphere of influence, whether it's within our families, workplaces, schools, or communities, where we can share the love of Christ and the hope of salvation. By living out our faith authentically and boldly, we invite others into the transformative relationship with Jesus that we ourselves have experienced. As we move forward in our spiritual journey, let us remember that God's purpose is not only about what we do, but who we are becoming in Christ. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are markers of a life that is rooted in God's will. As we seek to live out our divine purpose, these fruits should become increasingly evident in our lives. They are the outward manifestations of a heart that is being conformed to the image of Christ. As we reflect on all that has been said, we must hold fast to the truth that we are deeply loved by God. Our purpose flows out of His love for us, a love that is unchanging and eternal. Romans 8 verses 38 to 39 reminds us that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This love is the foundation upon which our lives are built, and it is the source of our strength as we seek to fulfill God's purpose. My beloved child, as we continue to meditate on this journey of faith, we must recognize that living out God's divine purpose also calls us to a deeper sense of surrender. Surrender is not merely a one-time decision, but an ongoing commitment to relinquishing control of our lives and trusting completely in God's will. In a world that often encourages self-reliance and the pursuit of individual desires, the Christian call is a radical one, 
to let go of our own plans and ambitions in favor of God's perfect design for our lives. Jesus reminds us in Luke 9 verse 23, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. This act of taking up our cross daily is a call to self-denial, to the kind of humility that invites God's presence to transform us. It means embracing the discomforts, sacrifices, and challenges that may come as we pursue God's purpose. Yet, we do not do this out of duty or obligation, but out of love for our Savior. In surrendering to God's will, we allow His Spirit to work within us, molding us into the likeness of Christ, day by day. As we surrender more fully to God, we also open ourselves to the joy and peace that come from living in alignment with His purpose. True peace, as Christ promised, is not the absence of troubles, but the presence of God in the midst of them. In John 14 verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This peace is a gift, a profound assurance that God is with us no matter the circumstances, guiding us along the path He has laid out for us. When we surrender our worries, fears, and anxieties to Him, we are free to experience this peace that surpasses all understanding. In addition to surrender and peace, there is a call to stewardship that comes with discovering our divine purpose. God has entrusted each of us with specific gifts, talents, resources, and opportunities, and part of fulfilling His purpose involves using these blessings for His glory. The parable of the talents in Matthew 25 reminds us that we are to be faithful stewards of what God has given us. Whether we have been entrusted with much or little, we are called to invest our gifts wisely in service to His kingdom. This does not only apply to material resources, but also to the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit has given to each believer. In 1 Peter 4 verse 10, we are encouraged, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. This stewardship is not about achieving personal success or recognition, but about building up the body of Christ and expanding His kingdom on earth. It is about looking at every opportunity, every relationship, and every circumstance through the lens of God's will, asking ourselves how we can bring honor to Him. When we serve others in love, when we give generously, and when we use our talents to uplift those around us, we are participating in the divine work that God is doing in the world. Moreover, as we strive to live out God's purpose, we must also be mindful of the call to persevere in faithfulness. There will be seasons in our Christian walk that are marked by challenges, disappointments, and perhaps even suffering. But it is in these moments that our faith is often refined and strengthened the most. James 1 verse 12 tells us, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Our trials are not without meaning or purpose. God uses even our hardships to shape our character, deepen our trust in Him, and prepare us for greater things in His kingdom. Through perseverance, we learn to rely on God's strength rather than our own. We recognize that it is not by our own efforts that we fulfill our calling, but by the grace and power of God working through us. Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 resonate deeply here. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. It is in our moments of weakness, when we are most aware of our need for God, that His strength is most evident. In these times, we learn the beauty of resting in His sufficiency, knowing that He will equip us to do what He has called us to do. Alongside perseverance, Another essential component of living out our divine purpose is the cultivation of deep, abiding faith. Faith is the foundation upon which our relationship with God is built, and it is through faith that we walk in the certainty of His promises. Hebrews 11 verse 1 defines faith as confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Our purpose, while divinely ordained, may not always be visible or fully understood in the present moment. But faith allows us to trust that God is working all things together for our good, even when the path ahead is unclear. This faith is not passive. It is active and requires our continual pursuit of God's presence. It calls us to lean into the promises of Scripture, to stand firm in the truth of God's Word, and to seek His guidance in every decision. It is through faith that we embrace God's calling, 
even when it seems daunting or beyond our own capabilities. And as we step out in faith, we discover that God is faithful to meet us in every situation, providing us with everything we need to carry out His will. In the pursuit of our purpose, we must also embrace a spirit of joy. Joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit and an essential marker of the Christian life. It is not dependent on our circumstances, but is rooted in the eternal hope we have in Christ. As we serve God and live according to His purpose, we experience the fullness of joy that comes from knowing we are walking in His will. Psalm 16 verse 11 declares, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Joy allows us to approach each day with gratitude and anticipation, knowing that God is with us and that He is accomplishing His good work through us. It fills us with strength to persevere through trials, to serve others with love, and to remain hopeful in the face of uncertainty. It is a joy that cannot be shaken, for it is grounded in the unchanging nature of God and the eternal promises of His Word. As we draw near to the conclusion of this reflection, let us remember that God's purpose for our lives is not something distant or unreachable. It is here, in the present, unfolding with each step of faith, each act of love, and each moment of surrender. Our purpose is to live for His glory, to love as Christ loved, and to bring His light into the world. And as we do so, we are reminded that God's grace is sufficient, His strength is perfect, and His love endures forever. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us continue to walk this path with courage, faith, and joy. Let us trust in God's divine purpose for our lives, knowing that He is faithful to complete the good work He has begun in us. And may we always be rooted in the truth that we are God's beloved children, created for His glory and called to live out His divine purpose. May the peace of Christ be with you as you continue to grow in faith, hope, and love. Amen.